everyone and welcome back to the Do So Knits podcast. My name is Kristen. I am a knitter and military spouse living in Germany and this is episode five. We're at five, a whole handful of episodes. So thanks you guys for tuning back in and hanging out with me today. I hope all of you are doing well. If you are interested in following me other places, I am Do So Knits on Instagram and Ravelry as well. And then all the show notes for everything I talk about today are linked in the description box down below and they're on my website, dosoknits.com. So I hope all of you guys are doing well. I know personally I've been a little stressed out by work. We are understaffed at the moment and it just feels like a never ending uphill battle. So I know that I've been coming home and not wanting to knit. Um, I try to wake up early and do some knitting before I go to work, which usually works out really well. I knit with my coffee and then I take Sherlock for a walk and then I get ready for work and I head to work. And so that's where most of my knitting time comes in because by the time I get home, I'm kind of spent and my brain doesn't want to do it. So I hope all of you guys are getting some knitting done. I hope it's bringing you a little bit of joy. I know when I do sit down and knit, it is really, really nice. I just can't necessarily focus on anything that is too complex right now. And that's where I'm at. So I don't have a ton of knitting to share, but I did find some other things to talk to you guys about today. Um, the weather here in Germany has been really, really nice. It's been like the perfect fall weather where like going on a walk with Sherlock is amazing and the window's open so hopefully it's not too loud outside. But the weather's been perfect and I can leave the windows open. It's jeans and in the morning you have like a sweater or a hoodie and in the afternoon you might have to take it off but it's been really, really nice. So I've been trying to enjoy this weekend because Looking at the weather, I think next week the weather is supposed to turn and it's supposed to get either stormy or cold or something like that. Um, so that's... i let the tractor go by. So that's kind of what's been going on. Last weekend I went and I got some new house plants. So this is, this is one of them. I went to the store with Courtney and yeah i got i got a few house plants this one i really like this one it has some pink leaves on it but it has to stay in here in my yarn storage room there's not much else in here because apparently this one is toxic to cats so i have to close the door when when i'm not in here because of course this is one of the two that ebony has decided that she likes to eat Ebony likes eating plants apparently and of course this one I've set it on the table when I got it home and she was like oh let me eat this and I was like ah <sighs> I looked it up and I was like of course of course the one that you want to eat is toxic so it lives in here it'll be my podcast plant it'll be my podcast plant and everything will be fine so that is that uh, before I get started uh, talking about what I've knit and what I've been working on, I just want to thank you guys so much for subscribing. Thanks for liking the videos. I love reading your comments, so keep them coming. It really means a lot. So today I have, looking down at my notes, I have one finished object, a half finished object, and then a couple of whips to talk about, and then I have a couple of miscellaneous and knit-alongs that I wanted to share with you guys. The only finished object that I have this week is the Swifter Swiffer Cover. This is a pattern by Knots of Rainbows and it is a free pattern on Ravelry. So I knit this, well, it's been in the past couple of weeks. So this is my Swifter Swiffer cover. I'm just gonna say my Swiffer cover. Um, so I have a bunch of leftover cotton and it's not necessarily leftover, I just cotton that I haven't used. 
So this is the Lily Sugar and Cream, and it is in the color Sage Green. And then this is my sweater cover. I knit this on a five millimeter H hook, so it is crocheted and not knit. But overall, I thought this would be a good idea because for the Swiffer Wet Jets, you have to buy these non-reusable like scrubby pads for the bottom. You just stick it on and then you mop and then you have to throw them away. And it just feels very wasteful. So I figured if I knit one of these, it's still scrubby because it has bobbles on the bottom. And then this way after I mop or clean the house, I can just throw it into the washing machine in the dryer and then it's good to go. And I can just keep reusing them. Because one, those pads are expensive and two, they're such a waste of plastic and they're not reusable. So I thought this would be a fun, plus I needed a quick project. So this was a good one. Um, so I did modify the pattern a little because in hers, she just has you fold the piece over. But for the wet jets, it like sprays the cleaning liquid from the top. So if I had hadn't made this little hole, it wouldn't have been able to get the cleaning solution out. So what I did was for I did the first row of the half double crochets and then I did two rows where they were shorter and I didn't do the last three. And then I knit the last row and I added the additional three back before starting the bobbles. And then I did the same thing on this side. And you knit it as one long rectangle and then you fold it in half and seam along the sides. I think the next time I do this pattern, I might take off one of the bobbles just because the one, it kind of gets, you see how it gets a little longer? It's like, mm, and then it gets a little longer there. I'm not a good crocheter. I'm not the best. I tend to lose count because I don't count. But yeah, overall, I'm very happy. I'm excited to use it. It fits on the Swiffer. The spray should be able to come out. And that's all that really matters, right? So this, this is my one finished object for the week. Hope you guys are glad you came by. Because that's all we got. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have some half finished objects and some whips to share too. But this is my one finished object. The next thing is a half finished object. So you can probably guess what it is. These, the next thing is my Angela Socks by Hugo Canyon. And this was a test knit that I did for her. So here is my half finished sock. I mean, this sock is finished, but the pair of socks is half finished. So this is the first one. So it has a beautiful lace panel going down the front. And then on the back, we have a nice rib section so that the leg stays up nice. And I kind of twisted it around, so it is on the back. And then, so for this pattern, it calls for a contrasting color for your cuff and your heel. And so I have the finished one. And then I have, I'm so close. So close. Let me set this one down. And this is where I am on the second one. I've done six repeats for the leg and then the heel flap, the gusset, and then on the foot, I'm doing eight repeats of the chart before doing the toe. And I think I'm on six of eight. So I am pretty close. So the colors in this sock are this main color is Chromatic Yarns Merino Sock, and it is in the Rock Gnome colorway, and I have the tag right here. Oh, come on, focus, thank you. 
So it's 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. I love this color. It is like a dusty mauvey brown with the specks of the black and the brown and it has these little pops of green which match this contrast color like perfectly. I absolutely love it. So the contrast color is Knitology Cabled Sock which is a yarn by Knit Crate and it is in the colorway Olivia. Right? Yeah. So I love this sock. So each of the socks have a slightly different chart. So your left chart and your right chart are mirrored. So they're different, but they mirror each other, which is so fun and exciting. And this pattern is set to release this weekend. I don't remember if it's Friday or Saturday. It is the 25th, which I think is Friday, but I wrote Saturday the 25th, which doesn't make sense because Friday is the 25th and Saturday is the 26th. So I don't exactly know, but it should be coming out this weekend. So it's by Huga Canyon. It'll be available on Ravelry and her website. And what's really nice about all of her patterns is she has a pay what you can scale. So if you can fully support her, absolutely feel free to. But if you are a little tight on money, but you really want to knit this pattern and still support her, she does have the options for a pay what you can, which is lovely. So I am in love with these socks. My goal is to have this one finished and have the pair done with the ends woven in by the release so I can put a picture up on Instagram for the release this weekend. So that is the goal. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I do post a lot of what I do in between the two weeks that I record. So if you ever want to see what I'm doing before I podcast, that is where to see because I started these after the last podcast and now they're almost done. I, ooh, ooh, there we go. I love these. I'm so excited for these and it's so soft and lovely. And I'm just so glad that I had a contrast color and main color in my stash that just match so perfectly together. I think it's so fun. So yes, that is the other finished object that I have, my half finished object, and I'm hoping to get these done this weekend. That is the goal. So now, I'm gonna take a sip. Sherlock just rearranged himself. He, he looks so sad. I think he wants my attention. The next item I'm working on is my Still Water Cardigan by Mary Green. I am knitting this in the size 44, and the pattern has sizes ranging from 32 to 52 for the bust circumference, and there's no to little ease written in the pattern. You're supposed to knit it pretty close to what your bust size is. So let me show you where I got, where I have gotten. So I'm knitting this on my Chow Gu Interchangeables US 6 four millimeters. Yes, four millimeter needles in the Cascade 220 Purple Jewel Heather colorway. So this is very hard to show sweaters, huh? This is where I am. So this little sheep, this is by the Corner of Craft. I love him, he's so cute. He's my Halloween sheep. That is where I was last week, and so you can see I've made a couple inches of progress. The lace, not lace, the faux cable down the front is starting to show. It's quite hard to show you. There it is. So you can see the faux cable. I'm just about to start the second one. I did have to yesterday, I got to start the second faux cable and my ribbing in here was off by a stitch. So I had to rip back and pull it up as a purl instead of a knit, which wasn't too bad. 
Now that I've separated for the sleeves, I told you guys that was my goal last week. I'm much happier because I can just go around. I need to dedicate some time every day to do this because I love the stitch definition that I'm getting. I think it's, the fabric is so nice. It'll be so warm and wooly and lovely to wear with basically like the outfit I'm wearing today, jeans and a t-shirt because that is basically all I wear jeans and a t-shirt and then in the winter it's jeans and a sweater with maybe a t-shirt. So this is where the steak's gonna be. The sheep is holding it nicely and yeah. I have 11 and some inches to go from the underarm and I've done about three. Take with that what you will. So let me, that is where I'm at. I quite enjoy this pattern. I'm glad I decided to steak it as well because it makes thinking about it way easier. Yeah, I think you can see those cable repeats pretty well. The faux cable. Honestly, I'd probably prefer a actual cable, but it's fine. It's cute. It's quite interesting how just doing increases and decreases can make the same effect of a cable without having to use a cable at all. So it's quite interesting. So that is my Stillwater cardigan and it is living in my, look at this bag. I love this bag. This is by Join the Stitches. She has currently closed her Etsy shop, but if you follow her on Instagram, she, if she has time, she's posting like one-offs where she has a little bit of time and she's making a few extra bags. And so this was one she posted on her Instagram and I saw the little animals and I love the gray and it is such a large, bag and it has pockets on the inside pockets i'm a sucker for pockets and even the pockets have little little animals on them it's so cute it's such a fun bag and the handle is nice and it's lightweight and i love it so thank you so much for letting me buy this bag and follow her because she makes amazing things so that is that oh no i lost i lost a bulb stitch marker hold on what happened oh i'm losing stitches all right we're just gonna grab those and we'll deal with that later that'll be easy just dropped a pearl pull it back up a little bit later So yeah, this is living in this bag and it's nice. It's got a cinch top, got the handle so you can take it with you. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. So the last whip that I have to share with you guys today is something I started a while ago and then I kind of let it sit for a while and I've picked it back up and I'm excited and I want to get it done because I have a deadline. The deadlines are, I need deadlines sometimes to be able to knit productively. So the last whip I have is my Painting Bricks by Stephen West. I am using my Lana Grossa US 4 three and a half millimeter needles and I'm knitting this with Cascade Heritage Solids. And I will show you guys where I'm at. It's kind of a mess. But this is hard to show you. This is where I'm at. This is my painting bricks. Wow, that makes my face really orange. <laughs> so when I picked it back up, and I've not done much because I just picked it back up yesterday. When I picked it back up, I was on this blue main color stripe and I knit this contrast color and I have started my next main color strip. 
So this is I'm not too bad. I will give you a rundown of the colors. So my main color in the background is night. And then the light blue is anis, A-N-I-S. And then we have turquoise. And then jade, dusty turquoise and cerulean. I think those are right. I'm not 100%. But it's kind of a ripples of water inspired color scheme. And I think currently I'm at 380 some stitches on the needle. And that's the wrong side which is really interesting. And then that's the right side. And I still have, I'm weaving the ends in as I go and I'll probably block before I cut them off. And it keeps doing this bunchy up thing. But that is where I am at. So my goal with this is to do one stripe a day whether that's that's either the main color or a contrast color i have 19 colors left and there are also 19 days until the stephen west mystery knit along so that that is my main goal because if i can finish this by the start of that look at it it's so cute if i can finish this by the start of that, then these needles will be clear and I can knit on that one guilt-free. So I have this, it's very formal, my tracker. So I have this many main colors left and this many contrast colors left and then I'll get to the border and I have that many main colors and contrast colors and the bind off. So that is the plan because deadlines are crucial. I have been kind of tracking my knitting time because I'm weird and like to track things like that. It's about 15 minutes a row right now. And each color section is four. So, it's about an hour of knitting a day. I can do it. Absolutely. It's just, it's crazy to think because I'm at 380 now and I think the last rows are in like the seven hundreds of stitches. <laughs> it's so many. So many. I've never knit one of his shawls before. This is one of the first ones. But you can see I have a couple mistakes where I accidentally grabbed the main color and right here as well. That one's on its own as well. I will say I am not a huge fan of this yarn. It is soft, it is lovely, but it is very, very splitty it splits so much when you're knitting it and i'm not even using like metal needles i'm using my lana grosses interchangeables and this yarn just splits and so it's really hard to kind of not look at it while you're knitting because i have to look to make sure i'm not splitting the stitch but it'll be okay the colors are gorgeous and i feel like ugh, when i look at it I want to knit it. Like looking at it right now makes me very excited. I put it away and then I pulled it out and I was showing it to Courtney and it made me want to knit it again. So I think it's so lovely. It'll be so nice to wrap up in once it is done. It's like living in this big old tote. I have all the ball cakes down there so that it stays organized so it's not super portable I really only work on it at home but I think that will be okay so that is all of the knitting that I have done that I wanted to share with you guys I do have a couple of things that I wanted to share so the first thing I want to share is I did also do some I forgot to bring them I have darned some of my socks 
and that is something else I've done in the past two weeks. So if you don't know what darning a sock is, it's like when you wear a hole, and it's a way to mend the hole. I have some of Bombas, which are merino wool socks. Um, my mom got them for me last Christmas, and I've worn them basically every day through last winter, and then basically I wear them every day except for when it was too hot and I was wearing sandals. And they are slowly, every single one of them is like getting a hole in the heel. They were so expensive that I'm determined to not throw them out. So I've been darning my socks <laughs> as I come to them. And it's quite easy. It's really nice. I highly recommend it for anyone who wears holes in their socks. Because it's a way to kind of give new life to the socks that you would just otherwise throw away. So that was the first thing. The other thing is, I mentioned the mystery knit along that Stephen West is putting on. And so I wanted to show you guys the yarn that I got for that. It was sneaky back there. It was holding out. So I went and I purchased one of the kits that he had on their website, West Knits, from Stephen and Penelope. Because I, I saw this one and I absolutely loved it. So here, let me take out. So with the West Knits kit, you get this cute little stitch marker. I also you also get a tag for when you finish the shawl to put on there. And you also get a sticker, but it must have fallen down in my tote. But these are the colors I got. So my main color is this like brown grayish main color. Oh, this is really good. And all of my yarn, it's an Urban, the Urban Pearl kit. And then my contrasting colors are this gray, this yellow, and then this orange. Oh, I'm so excited. I really wanted like an autumnal inspired color scheme for my shawl and I feel like this is going to be so lovely. So I'm very excited for that. If you guys haven't done or don't know about it, his mystery knit along, it is a knit along that he hosts. It starts on October 9th and then every week he'll be releasing a clue with the pattern. You don't have to buy one of his kits to do it. You can just get the pattern on Ravelry or there's another website as well. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's on the Stephen and Penelope website if you can't access Ravelry. So I'm very excited. Oh, there's a sticker. <clears throat> very excited. So that is my driving force to finish my painting bricks so that I can start this on October 9th. That is the goal. And with that, when I ordered that kit, I also ordered a issue of Lina magazine. There are so many gorgeous patterns in this book. I just want to knit it like this one. Pattern. I want to make that sweater so bad. Hi, buddy. What's going on? Yeah, I know. You went downstairs and you scared me for a bit. I know. And so this pattern, this book, it has multiple patterns. It has recipes. It has reclamations of other books. Oh, let's not, let's not hit my teeth. This is another sweater I'm really interested in making. And the photography and the printing is so gorgeous. And I think this is the pattern that really sold me. Let me see. Okay, this is the best picture. Laka. It's a cardigan with bobbles. And it's knit sideways, which is so interesting. You can kind of see it here where the stitches run this way. <clears throat> but there are so many patterns in this book that I'm excited to try and knit. And it's a gorgeous book. If you don't want to buy the individual book, if any of the patterns are interesting to you, you can download and buy each individual pattern. But I was excited to add this to my library. 
I'm so excited. And with that, I mentioned the Westnitz Mystery Knit Along this year, but there are so many other podcasts doing knit alongs right now, and it is so exciting, and it's so much fun to see what other people are doing. So I wrote them down in my book, and I wanted to share you guys share with you guys some of the other ones. So Knitting Natty, who also has a YouTube channel, has a, a knit along going on right now. I think it's a make along because you can crochet or knit and it's her fall garment make along. And so that is running on both Ravelry and Instagram and I'll link it down below to the Ravelry group and I'll link her Instagram as well. And then the Bearded Pearl, who is a podcast that I recently found in the last two weeks, is doing a sweater weather knit along, which is, his dates are a little different than Nitty Natty's, but I think both of them allow dipping into other knit alongs. So I'm participating in both of those and it's so much fun. That one is just knit a sweater or cardigan or anything that is sweater weather related. So that is so much fun. And that one's running till like November. And then the last knit along I have is the knit one and done, which that one is hosted by multiple different podcasts. I think it's five different podcasts. The main two podcasts that I watch that are uh, hosting it are Sweet Tea No Shade and Needles at the Ready. And so for that podcast, it is to start a new project and make it from one skein and then you're going to knit one and you're done. So it's good for if you have any Christmas presents that you want to get started on or if you just have some things that you just want to a quick knit. I'm planning to make a hat for Shane on that. I started it twice yesterday and I ripped it out both times. The first time I knit it my German twisted cast on, I didn't make my tail long enough, so I couldn't get all the stitches on my needles. And then the second time I made my tail long enough, I overestimated that time. So then my leftover tail was really, really long. I started knitting about, probably about 10 stitches in, realized I'm knitting with the tail and not with the yarn skein. So then I ripped those stitches back, I unknit them. And then I knit the whole first round and get to the end and I messed up my ribbing pattern. And I looked back to find where I messed it up and I messed it up like 10 stitches in. So I couldn't just like go back 10 stitches. I would have basically had to go back the entire starting round to then correct it. So I ripped it out again. So that'll happen. I just, after starting it three times yesterday, I was done. I was like, nope, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. not knitting this right now. So that was that tale of woe. I also have my everyday slouchy beanie that I'm planning to rip out. So that is also a tale of woe. It's fine. That's kind of why I only have a few projects right now because there's just some things just aren't going right. And it's kind of disheartening, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I just bought a shirt with that on it, and that is my go-to saying right now. And it'll be fine. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was also hosted by Needles at the Ready, and they are participating, hosting, kind of. I think it's something that happens every year, but they have a Ravelry read up for it and it is the Discovery of Witches read along. I haven't read much since the whole pandemic started. I just wasn't in a headspace to do it, but I'm pretty excited to be a part of this read along. I have not read this book before, but have been recommended it. And so what this read along is is you read the book in tandem of what the um, like the time scheme is in the book. I don't know the timeline. So you read chapter one on September 18th because the book takes place on September 18th. And then I'm reading the next two chapters on September 21st 
because those are the days that that happens. And so I went through and I notated all of the days and what I was supposed to read each day. And I started it yesterday, so technically I read the 18th on the 20th. But I think if you hop on now, you should be good to go. I'm quite excited. I'm very excited. I'm excited to actually read a book. And so I got this from my library, as you can tell. But yeah, that's basically, that's the last thing I have. So thanks guys for hanging out with me today. That's basically everything I have. Not much else is going on. I'm working, walking the dog. The rest of today will probably be editing the podcast and hanging out, knitting, and maybe I'll make like a apple crumble because that sounds really good. So if you guys like this video, make sure you hit like. If you have any comments, leave one down below. I love reading them. I love responding to them. And then if you subscribe and hit the little notification bell, you'll know when the next video I post goes up. And have a great two weeks, guys. I'll see you next time.